in a calculus class, um, I just called in. I'm not feeling it um, well enough to be at school, but the AP test doesn't care if I'm feeling sick or not. Um, so we're already a little behind now, and so I want to uh, make sure that you folks have a shot at getting uh, the rest of this area between two curves lesson. So you're almost there. Um, what I've been um, giving you little uh, hints about is that occasionally, and it's not always on the AP test, but it is there are enough times that um, that it's totally worth doing. And also, um, it's just a minor extension, if you think about it, or as you'll see, to what you've already learned. And that is sometimes we have been slicing things this away, right? Little bits of x, dx, the rectangles that are dx wide. It sometimes makes more sense, depending on the function, to go up for the so the caterpillar is crawling up the y-axis rather than along the x-axis. So let's just see how this plays out, okay? So let's just take a drop dead easy function. Um, so let's say that. Um, uh, here, let's say that I've got a rectangle here, okay? So let's say that this is y equals 4, and then let's say that this is x equals 3, okay? So if I asked your third grade cells, what's the area of this um, rectangle? You would just say 12, right? Space, time, site. And you can also get that using calculus in two ways. We've only ever done one. So let's do both so you can see the differences and the similarities. If I say, hey, <clears throat> Miss Caterpillar is crawling this away, then do you agree that she d takes little rectangles that are dx wide, and um, the rectangles are all going to be what the y function is here, right? y equals 4. So I'm going to go from 0 to 3. And then I'm just going to integrate 4, and each rectangle is dx thick, just a little slice of... Um, little slice of x. Take the antiderivative, 4x. Plug in top minus plug in the bottom, and yay, calculus works. We get 12. So can you folks pause the video and see if you can set up the integral for if the caterpillar was crawling up the y-axis, what would be different about this integral? So go ahead, pause, see if you can get it. Okay, you're back. Um, so here's the reasoning that you should have done. <clears throat> if instead, <clears throat> if instead of going uh, on the x-axis, we're going along this way instead, we'll look at this caterpillar. Now, as she goes, she's picking up little slices of Y, little bits of Y. All these rectangles are dy thick, right? As she's going up the y axis, they're all dy thick. So we're going to integrate all of those. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to find the area of all of them by integrating, I should say. But we're going from zero to four, right? Like that. And how wide is each one of these? Well, they're all three units wide, and it's dy now. Okay, so that's the integral that I was hoping you might get. I don't know if that was beyond your reach or not, but that is it, okay? And then when you take the antiderivative, just be careful. We're integrating with respect to y now. So this is going to be 3. y is my antiderivative. And I go from 0 to 4, and everything else is the same. And guess what? Do I get the same answer? Well, hopefully you do, because it's the same rectangle, right? So that's it. Like, that's how you do it. I, I mean, I've got two more curveball y type things, I guess, or not even curveballs, just two more things to tell you about that you might run into. But that's it. <clears throat> um, so let me put up another one. We'll just get to one of those tricks right away. Um, <laughs> oh, I know what it is. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. So, let's say that I have the function 6 minus x, okay? So this here is f of x equals 6 minus x. So, you can tell that's a line with the y-intercept of 6. 
has a zero of six. Okay. So if I need this area, what can you just tell us a triangle, right? Like eight times, I'm sorry, six times six times a half is going to give me 18, right? So we know that the area is 18 ahead of time, which is good because since we're doing something new, it's always nice to know if we have the right answer so we can compare our new stuff to something known. Let's now try to write the integral. <clears throat> Should have done one thing different here, darn it. Um, whatever. I think this will be fine. You'll still see it. Um, so, uh, stop the video and see if you can do the integral for... I know you can do it for if I'm crawling on the x-axis. Stop the video and see if you can do it for crawling up the y-axis. Okay, we're back. Um, so... She's going up the y-axis, and here it's a little different. Because each little skinny rectangle, they're still dy thick. <coughs> but can you tell that they're going to be varying in size now? Like up here, they're going to be really short. Here, they're really long. But what do they all have in common? Instead of being, uh, well, here, let me just draw it. The way the old thing that we used to do is if I had a curve like this, do you agree that each of the rectangles was always f of x tall, also known as the y-coordinate, right? So I'm going to do the same thing over here when I'm finding the area crawling up this side. Can you tell that all of these rectangles, no matter where I draw it, they're always going to be x-coordinate long, right? So instead of y-coordinate tall, they're x-coordinate long. So I just got to figure out what is my x-coordinate. Um, what's a way that I can write it so that it's true no matter where I am on the function, where, no matter where I am, um, where, uh, sorry, no matter where the caterpillar is on the y-axis, how can I write the something so that it's true for every single x-coordinate that she's passing? Oh my gosh. Whatever. Okay. I'm sorry. So here's the thing. You've got a function right here that maps out the relationship between x and y, don't you? Isn't this a relationship between x and y for this function? So if you need the x-coordinate, guess what you can do? Just solve for it. That's all you got to do. So if it's not some um, if it's not some easy function like the rectangle one that we started with, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you figure out what the x-coordinate is. So if I add x to both sides and then subtract y from both sides, you get x equals 6 minus y, right? So all I have to do then is integrate. The caterpillar is going to start at 0 and go up to 6. And each of her rectangles is going to be x-coordinate long. So that's 6 minus y. And then times how thick they are, dy. And let's just see if we get 18 here. When you take the antiderivative, you're going to do fdc1. So you take the antiderivative, 6y minus 1 half y squared. Go from 0 to 6. If you put in 6 here, you'll get 36 minus 1 half of 36. And then I could take away, I mean, I really should subtract, put in a 0. But guess what? If I put in a 0, can you tell I'm just going to get 0 on both of those? So really, this is all I get. And guess what that equals? Yay, calculus works again. So, what is your takeaway from this example? It's that... If you are crawling up the y-axis, each of your rectangles is no longer going to be dy tall. It's going to be dx long. So you have to solve for the x-coordinate. So that's all you have to do. Okay, And then that goes here. Now you might be saying, <clears throat> Mr. H, isn't this whole thing that we're doing area between two curves? And I only see one right here. Yes, that's true. So let's do one. This is the final complication that you'll be expected to know for the AP test. Is What if we're crawling up the y-axis, but we're trying to integrate the area between two curves, two functions, okay? Pardon. So let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> Hold on, I have one here on my computer. 
y squared minus 1 and x equals 3. Okay. So let's say that we have f of y, that'll look weird to you, equals y squared minus 1. And let's say that we also have x equals 3. All right? Let's make sure you can see that. Yeah, you can. So one nice thing for you is that the if they ever ask you to do this, they'll always provide you with a picture because they know your calculators can't do this. Little, um, a little, oh my gosh, my words are gone. What's it called? A little disk, thank you, for um, TI-83s and 84s. You know why your calculators can't do them? Because they were programmed in the 80s and 90s. And so decimals can do them because decimals was actually written while you folks had been alive. <laughs> TI is not doing that, though. And they're still charging the same amount. Yay. Okay. In any case, they'll always provide a picture. I don't know if this will be obvious to you, but um, can you see I've got a parabola looking thing? But this time, it's the y that's getting squared. So believe it or not, what's going to happen here is it's going to look like this. And the x, this is like just like x here, okay? The x coordinate are all getting subtracted by 1, so believe it or not, you're going to end up with something that looks like this, okay? So when your y is 0, your x is negative 1. So if y is 0, x is negative 1, like that. And then x equals 3 is just a vertical line of 3. Um, so this is 3 right there, okay? So we need the area between these two functions. How do you do it? Well, it looks to me like the area starts right down here. Like, where the heck are those two points? Um, well, let's just see. We know that they are the same there, um, that the points are the same, the x and y coordinates are the same. So let's just set these equal to each other to figure out where that is. So we know that y squared minus 1 has to equal 3. And then if you add 4 to both sides, uh, sorry, add 1 to both sides, you get that. And so this happens at plus or minus 2. When y is at plus or minus 2. And that makes sense according to our drawing, doesn't it? Because we have two points here. This one must be the when y is positive 2. This one must be when the y is negative 2. Okay? So all I'm going to do now... Well, actually, here, can you folks... Oh, no, you probably don't know how. Yeah. So the trick now is... this, is the, And this is the second trick here, and that's... This, that's it. Then you know everything that I know. You know how when you integrate while well, she crosses along the um, x-axis, it's always top curve minus bottom curve, top curve minus bottom curve. That's it. So here, to get the right answer, it's going to be right curve minus left. Right curve minus left. So which is my rightmost curve here? It's the x equals 3. It's just that vertical line. That's to the right of the other function. So when I do my integral, negative 2 to positive 2, and I'm going to have 3 minus this thing. dy, and I should really do double sets there like that. Okay. Um, and then you just, you know, I'm going to clean this up a little bit so that I don't have to integrate something so heinous. Um, so 3 minus a negative 1, that's just the same as 4, and then minus y squared. You see how I just cleaned that up a little? And then when you take the antiderivative, positive 2, right? And then I'll, I'll keep going. I don't know if, you, if it's really useful for you to see this part. It's just arithmetic at this point. Bam. If I put in a negative 2, um, I think I did that right. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. Um, and then 8 minus a negative 8. Well, here, actually, let me just put it all into, I'll split off the parentheses. So I have plus an 8, and then minus an 8 thirds. And this, then now I'll just stop because. Like, you can do the rest, but it's going to be 16 minus 16 thirds, right? Um, 32 thirds, maybe? Um, and that is how you do 
area between two curves if the caterpillar is crawling up the y-axis. So take home points. Like if we were doing no notes right now, and I'll do them officially when I get back, okay? When you're crawling up the y-axis, one of the key things, the key thing to realize is that now instead of having skinny rectangles that are vertically aligned, you know, that are each D, D, Y, I'm sorry, that are each DX thick and are Y tall, now you're going to have rectangles that are aligned horizontally that are DY thick. And they're going to be X coordinate long, okay? X coordinate long. And they stack on top of each other like this. Why does that? Okay. They stack on top of each other like this. That's realization number one. Realization number two is that means you have to solve for x now. If they don't tell you what x equals, well, then you don't know how long the x coordinate is, do you? So whatever function they give you, solve it for x. And then you write the integral and it has dy on the end. And then the last thing to know is when they give you two functions to find the area between, it's always going to be right minus left. Okay? Hope that helps um, and that you can do the rest of the, well, I'll show you where the rest of the sheet is, okay, the, the problems. See ya.